Hello? Oh, hi, Jen. Oh, I'm good. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Weather's bad here. Yep. It's really coming down. Yeah. It's raining. Thunder, lightning, you know. Is it, is it where you are, too? Oh. The power just went out. Yeah. No. The younger generation would never understand that the phone lines stay on when the power goes out in the 20th century. Come on. Yeah, I'm doing an info dump right now, so there's suspension of disbelief is maintained. Yeah. Your power go out? Oh, okay, yeah, so it must be bad. Yep. Jen, I gotta go. Yeah. Something's going on. Okay. Yep. Bye. Jen, Jen, yeah, yeah. He's out. He got loose. I think he broke the lock. I don't know, but he's wearing the mask. Yeah, the mask I wear when I torture him. Okay, yep. I gotta go. I gotta finish this. Yeah, you better run. <laughs> well, in my timeline, it's October, and this video kicks off the TPS month of Halloween. And if, uh, well, if you're watching from some point in the future, every day can be Halloween if you let it. <clears throat> I'm supposed to be doing a review video on a mic I've wanted so badly for years. On what? This is the microphone you've heard thousands of times and maybe never knew it. It's used in movie productions all over the world and has been for decades. And uh, I used it exclusively in that opening short film. The celebrated Sennheiser MKH-50 Super Cardioid Small Diaphragm Condenser Microphone. I've got it here in studio and we're going to do some fun stuff with it. Well, I kind of already did the fun stuff with it, uh, so now it's, uh, well, it's, it's all the other stuff. It's the best. It's the best indoor dialogue mic ever created, if you ask me. It's leagues better than anything Rode could ever come up with. But where we're going, we don't need Rodes. It's all their nerdy stuff, and it's coming right up. So... Good day and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm Michael Myers. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you can be notified of new content right when it drops. I am very fortunate to have the MKH-50 here today. It was loaned to me by one of our good members here. The Logician. You may have seen his name in the opening credits a few times. Check out his channel. You'll find that link in the description below. He sent it to me so that I could give it the TPS treatment, and that is precisely what I intend on doing. Thank you so much, Trev. I really appreciate you taking the time to send me this mic. And I also appreciate the anxiety you must be feeling having an expensive piece of cherished equipment sent halfway across the country by mail to a guy you've never met. I think now would be a good time to reveal my evil plan. You see, 
all this time on this channel, all these videos I've made, all the effort I put in has all been to create a false sense of security so that you personally would be duped into sending me an MKH-50 microphone. <laughs> now that I have it in my clutches, I no longer need this channel. I'll promptly be packing up, move out of the country, change my identity, live the rest of my life off the grid at the personal cost of tens of thousands of dollars. You'll never find me. I'll be like a ghost, a phantom. I've got a two-day head start on you, which is more than I'll need. I've got friends in every town and village from here to the Sudan. I speak a dozen languages, know every local custom. I'll blend in, disappear. You'll never see me again. Or perhaps I'll hang around just a little while longer. Anyway, spoiler alert, it's an awesome mic, and it's industry standard for a reason. I mean, listen. So you've been hearing the raw sound of the MKH-50 all along. I've got it boomed just up here. I was going to leave it in the shot, and then, uh, well, it was a lot of work, so no. I've done absolutely no processing to it whatsoever, but I might be using a limiter if uh, my sound hole gets a little too lively. So here is a brief history of the MKH-50. Sennheiser is an old and very loved audio company whose products have a long history of use on movies. The 416, for example, made its way into films starting around the mid-1970s. Uh, I reviewed that mic, actually, a while back, and you can watch that review right here. After a few versions of supercardioid indoor boom microphones, the MKH-50 was released in 1988, which was Willow and Die Hard Ago. By the late 80s, the MKH-50 was used as an indoor and sometimes outdoor boom mic on sets all over Hollywood and the world, and is still used regularly today. So let's have a look at it. It's a very iconic looking mic. If you're into film production audio, you'll recognize this mic immediately, though it looks very close to the MKH-40 and even the 30. It's black with a tube shape and one flat side that features the recessed dip switches. One switch turns on and off the low-cut filter, and the other is a pad switch which reduces the sensitivity by 10 decibels. The tip of the mic sports a rigid black grille with a series of little slots running around the circumference of the mic. It has a standard XLR connection and requires 48 volts of pure unleaded phantom power. It ships complete with a foam windscreen, a mic clip, and a very well-built, fitted shock mount. It also comes with the exact same 70s style case that comes with the 416. I mean, it's literally the same exact case. It has a frequency response of 40 hertz to 20 kilohertz with a flat response from 40 hertz up to 3 kilohertz, where it has a broad bump all the way to 15 kilohertz. It weighs only 100 grams. It's lighter than you'd think which is good news for boom ops. It measures, oh, hold on a second, let me just find my trusty old measuring tape here. <laughs> you know, this measuring tape was virtually created by one James Halliday somewhere in the middle of this century. I, uh, I picked it up off a couple of gunters in the Oasis back in 2045. <laughs> anyway, it measures 153 millimeters long and has a diameter of 25 millimeters. That's about six inches by one inch in American. So this mic is not meant in any way for music, and I wouldn't dishonor its heralded greatness by attempting that, so there will be no music tests here, obviously. However, I am sure there are viewers out there that would like to hear what this mic sounds like when compared to others in its class or below it or out of it or whatever, different classes. So let's do the obvious. Let's do what movies do all the time. Use both the MKH-50 and the MKH-416 and kind of toggle between them. When on a movie set, the 416 would be one choice for outdoor shoots, especially in bad weather. Especially. It's kind of like indestructible. It's known as being a lifelong mic. And for indoor shoots, the MKH-50, what we're reviewing here, is the common choice. But the 50 can also be used outdoors on a nice day, hopefully. You don't want to, I mean, you don't want to ruin it. You want to baby it a bit. 
So here's the sound of the MKH-416. That's what you're hearing right now. This mic is and has been used extensively for both outdoor and some indoor scenes in movies since the 1970s. In many cases, location sound mixers will opt for a mix of the 416 for outdoor and the 50 for indoor because they can be better matched in post, especially if the outdoor shots are in like a blizzard or rain or out, you know, in the elements. So let's toggle between both raw mics. No processing, only level matching. So here's the sound of the MKH-50 once again. And now I'm going to switch back to the 416 and how you're hearing the 416. Now let's try to match the 416 to the 50. They are completely different mics and thus matching them is never 100%, but I tried anyway. You're currently listening to the RAW 416. I spent an entire night preparing uh, an EQ profile for the 416 to match the sound of the 50. So let's switch that on right now. Now you're hearing the sound of the 416 with my EQ match profile on. What do you think? Did it match? Did I get it close? I mean, uh, that's really interesting. Let's reverse it. <laughs> How about getting the 50 to sound like the 416? All right. You're currently hearing the 416, and now I'm going to switch on the MKH-50 profile that I made. Uh, here we go. It's on now. So this is now the sound of the 50 with the 416 profile turned on. What do you think? Does it sound like the 416? Uh, so, <laughs> okay, so here's the 50 with the 416, and now here's the 416. And now here's the 50, and now here's the 416. You know, if you have a 416 and you'd like to make it sound more like a 50, or if you have a 50 and want the sound of a 416, and you own FabFilter Pro Q3, then I've uploaded the emulation profile to my website. You can go to the tps.ca slash digital downloads uh, to download the emulation profiles for only four dollars, like three ninety nine in Canadian. So I don't even know what that is in, in American. How about getting the sound of the MKH fifty with a cheaper but totally similar style mic? That's the one you've all been waiting for. Okay, so you're now hearing me on the Octava MK012 hypercardioid small diaphragm condenser mic. This is a mic I use quite often for indoor booming. It's relatively cheap, but with a little EQ, it's fabulous. The Octava MK012 is considered, you know, the poor person's MKH50. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's terrible. It's actually a really good mic, uh, as you might know. I reviewed it right here. Um, and, you know, it's often a choice because it's much cheaper, but still has a great sound as long as you can EQ it. Uh, because it, it needs a little EQ and finessing, but it's good. Now, let's hear it with my MKH-50 emulation EQ profile turned on. So now you're hearing the Octava MK-012 with the MKH-50 profile turned on. Did I get close? Because this is the one that I think that, uh, that I really want to make sure I do, because this is the mic that you would use. So if you could, you know, get an EQ profile for the Octava MK012 that made it sound closer to the MKH50 just by clicking a preset, boom. I mean, that's pretty cool. I think that's awesome. So if it, if it works, I mean, that's, a, that's like a $1,000 savings. Uh, but uh, but just to let you know, with the EQ profiles, one can only get close. It's physically impossible to create a complete and total clone of a mic with just a parametric EQ when the other mic has different parts, right? like, you know, like a different body, different capsules, different uh, polar patterns, etc. But, uh, but we can get close, and it's, uh, it's a good starting point, at least. I like the simulation that I created. I think it's great. I'll, I'll definitely be using this on all videos in the future. Until such time as uh, I can actually own an MKH-50 because, you know, that's the goal. Okay, I'll do one more microphone uh, that people might have, especially if you're a field recordist. And, I, I'll, you know, it's, but it's different. But I'll try it. And uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see how close we can get it, right? Uh, another very low cost but beautiful microphone. Uh, okay, let's do that right now. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now you're hearing me on the Line Audio CM4. Uh, that's the sound right now. Uh, it's a cardioid small diaphragm condenser mic. This is a great mic for all sorts of things. 
but it has a very wide polar pattern, so you can't really kind of you can't really pick out, you know, isolate a voice, uh, which is good for a lot of things. Like if you need uh, less off-axis coloration around it, then I mean it's great. Like this mic is amazing for orchestral uh, recording. You know, uh, just capturing a lot of that without use without getting that uh, that off-axis coloration. Um, it's nothing like the super cardioid polar pattern of the MT MKH-50, but here we are. Just for reference, right now you're hearing me on the MKH-50, and here's the sound. Let's toggle back through it. Here's the MKH-50, and now you're hearing me on the Line Audio CM4. And after the Line Audio CM4, here's the MKH-50, and here's the difference on what they sound like, okay? So let's switch on another EQ profile I made for the CM4 to make it sound more like the MKH-50. All right, switching on now. So now you're hearing me on the CM4. Okay, so let's switch to the MKH-50, and now we're on the MKH-50, and now we're back to the CM4, and now we're back to this MKH-50. So, uh... <laughs> That's the sound. That's the difference as I'm toggling through. All right, so if you like that, once again, you can get any of these uh, profiles that I made on my website, the tps.ca. Go to digital downloads and uh, you can find them there, mic emulations. You know, maybe you'll like it. All right. Onward. Onward again. Very good. Very good, very good. So that's your basic Extraordinaire Balls Sennheiser MKH-50. It's the king of indoor dialogue booming. And now for the painful part, the cost. You can pick up your very own Sennheiser MKH-50 at your closest audio product dealer that sells Sennheiser, which is like all of them, feels like, uh, for 1200 US dollars. Yeah, it's not cheap. I've included a link for it in the description below. If you use it, I will get a commission payout so large that I will purchase the entire Caribbean, Caribbean, like all of it, all of the Caribbeans. I'll never go there, but, uh, but I'll think of it often. It's too hot. It's too hot in the Caribbean, Caribbean, Caribbean. As for my analysis, well, I have nothing but love for this mic. I enjoy the sound of it more than the 416, obviously. It works so well in all sorts of situations. I 100% fully and completely with no equivocation recommend this mic for all your video and film production needs if you can afford it. And if you can't afford it, and let's, I mean, come on. I mean, it's expensive. It's easy to not afford it. So if you can't, but you happen to own something like the Octava MK012 with a hypercardioid, which is a common onset mic for people who, you know, can't, afford an MKH-50, or if you have the CM4, if you like the sound of what happened when I put on the uh, EQ profile, then just go to my website and download the EQ profiles for those mics, and, uh, you know, you can get closer. And uh, as for now, I think I'm going to be stealing this sound. <laughs> I'll be using the emulation I've ripped from it myself and use it on the MKH-012, because as you might know, I, uh, I don't actually own the MKH-50. I would love to, but I, I don't. So I'm going to use the emulation I made, and I'm going to use that from now on on my Octava so that I can sound a little closer to this awesome sounding mic. Because I've captured its very essence and will pedal it across the planet forever. Do you hear that, logician? I've stolen its very soul, and I shall, in a way, keep it for all time. I'll, uh, I'll mail it back to you tomorrow. Well, that just about does it for me. Oh, and... Bye now. In transmission. Yes. What a great mic. I'm so happy to have tested it. Watch these other videos. They're very good for your health. They make you feel good. They make you feel good about yourself. <laughs>